Hi, in this video on the lift and drag of supersonic aircrafts, we're going to look at two sample problems with guided steps to help you solve the problem. We will look at two types of problems. Number one, an easy problem to help you understand the main concept. And number two, a difficult problem to guide you through the longer steps needed. In problem one, taken from our class textbook, we have a flat plate facing a supersonic flow of Mark three. This is the easy problem. You can pause this video to read through the problem first. In fact, I would recommend you to try to solve this whole problem on your own before you look at the guided steps in this video. In the guided steps, we won't go through the detailed process of doing the calculations because we've covered that before in the previous videos. When we start solving any problems, it's extremely helpful that we draw the schematics of the problem. We can do that by drawing the basic information of the problem, like the one shown here. And every time we have more information, we can add that new information to our drawing. Next, we know that because the free stream flow is supersonic, it's going to go through either an oblique shock or an expansion fan when it deflects around a corner. We've covered this topic before in our previous video. The flows in regions 2 and 3 are calculated next. With these values of the flow pressures, we can calculate the total force acting on the plate. Finally, the lift and drag can be decomposed from the force, which is inclined from the vertical line at the angle alpha. This is exactly the angle of attack of the plate. The answer is given in the unit of kilonewton per meter because we are asked to calculate the force per meter span acting on the plate. The second and more difficult problem is on an unsymmetrical wedge with the geometry as shown here. Again, I recommend that you try to solve this problem yourself first before going through the guided steps here. If you feel in any way intimidated by this problem because it looks complicated or because it looks like it's going to be a long problem, don't worry. You just need to split the problem into a sequence of smaller problems. This way, each smaller problems become more doable and not too intimidating to solve. To split a problem correctly, you need to strategize or have a clear plan of what are the big steps needed to solve this problem. In this second problem, we're going to see the separate steps with smaller problems to solve. But first, remember that at the start of our solving process, it's important that you draw the schematics of the problem as detailed as possible. A good schematic drawing will help you see and understand the problem and guide your thinking process. In this problem, we need to calculate the flows and the forces separately for each of the surfaces here. But before we start calculating the flows in detail, we need to figure out the angles and the lengths of the sides of the surfaces that we need in our calculation later. This is a geometrical problem, so it should be doable, even though sometimes the geometry can be a bit tricky. So, i leave you to figure this out yourselves. I'll show you the answers for you to compare with your own answers. Each delta angle here is the flow deflection angle at each corner. Each side length is needed later to calculate the force on each surface. If the problem is on a symmetrical wedge, the geometry of these angles and side lengths would be much simpler. So, if you understand the process of solving the unsymmetrical wedge that we have here, you definitely won't have any problems to solve this symmetrical wedge case. Now, with these deflection angles, we can calculate the flows on all the four surfaces. The three important parameters that we need to calculate are the Mach number M, the static pressure P, and the stagnation pressure P0. It's crucial that we are aware that P0 3 is less than P0 1 because the flow goes through an oblique shock. So, we must calculate P0 3 here to use it when we calculate the flow in region 5. Next, using these flow pressures, you can calculate all the forces. Each force acts at the middle of its own surface, in a direction perpendicular and towards the surface. Each of the surface force must then be decomposed into lift and drag using the angle alpha i between the force and the vertical line. Alpha i is also the same angle between the surface and the free stream flow direction, but it is not the same as the angle of attack alpha. There's one more thing I want to say about the angle alpha i here. 
In the previous video, in part 2b, I used theta i instead of alpha i. It is now clear that alpha i is a better variable for this angle, not theta i. This is because theta i is also used as a Prandtl-Meyer angle when we calculate flows across expansion fans. We definitely don't want to mix up using the same variable theta i for two different angles. Finally, in step 4, we can add up all the lift and drag forces to get the total lift and drag acting at the center of gravity of the wedge. If needed, you can also calculate the total force acting on the wedge. Before we end, I want to summarize two important things when we solve a problem. Number one is to be systematic by drawing the schematic diagram of the problem. And number two is to strategize and split the main problem into smaller problems so that each step become more doable. Alright, that's it for this session. Thank you for watching. Bye.